Usually, when people see caterpillars crawling on the ground, they just walk by them. But when I walk by them, I always end up wondering what happened to the ones that I walk by and if they turned into butterflies or not. So when I came across like the 10th caterpillar I've walked by, I got an idea. I thought, well, these things are so small and delicate in such big environments around them, so there's a chance they may get eaten or somehow just not survive and make it all the way to the butterfly stage at all. And that's when I decided that it was time to witness the process of a caterpillar becoming a butterfly myself. So I never had to wonder what actually happens to the caterpillars that pass by me ever again. And this one, this one was extra beautiful. It had these spikes on it, little tiny white speckles and red dots lining its entire body and immediately I took it home and put it in my bug enclosure to see the magic happen. And I was really surprised to see just how quickly change occurred in this enclosure. Caterpillars go through a process called metamorphosis where they transform into a pupa inside a chrysalis before emerging as an adult butterfly. And prior to this, they usually stop eating and look for a good location to undergo this transformation. And when I noticed that this caterpillar wasn't eating after I put her in a bug box, I realized it was because we got this caterpillar at the right moment. It was ready for the chrysalis stage. Only a few hours after bringing this caterpillar home, I checked on it to see that the caterpillar shed its skin and I couldn't find the caterpillar anywhere. And as I was looking for it, I learned the butterfly secretes enzymes to loosen and split its old exoskeleton through a process called molting. Right before entering the chrysalis stage, caterpillars undergo a final molt where it sheds its old exoskeleton one last time, which very quickly hardens in just a few hours to protect the caterpillar as it transforms inside of the chrysalis. This final molting stage was basically where our caterpillar was at before becoming a butterfly, so we literally caught this butterfly right in time. But then I wondered, well, how did our caterpillar end up hanging from the top of the enclosure after that final molt? And I learned that, well, it basically secured itself to the surface by spinning a strong silk pad from its spinnerets, and it used its pro legs to grip firmly. And if you're wondering what I was wondering at this point, spinnerets are part of their bodies found at their mouths, and they help them survive in harsh environments by allowing them to form safety lines or web a cocoon, kind of like a spider, but in a butterfly way and the pro legs are sort of like legs for caterpillars but they have tiny hooks called crochets that help them anchor themselves securely to a surface so the spinnerets mixed with the pro legs really makes caterpillars strong little survivors out in harsh environments that we may otherwise be familiar with as mother nature if you've ever seen my ladybug metamorphosis video, you'll get a better idea of how that actually happens. But anywho, these are all of the questions that I had that very first day after taking our little friend home and watching her shed that skin so quickly. And as I witnessed the beautiful chrysalis hanging in that little enclosure, boy, let me tell you how excited I was to witness the metamorphosis of a butterfly. And I thought, you know what, I better get her a bigger enclosure, which you can actually find on my Amazon shop if you want to get those enclosures yourself. For any caterpillar hunts that you go on this summer after watching this video, the link is in my bio and in the caption of this video. But I placed her in a bigger enclosure and got my time-lapse cameras ready. And I got a macro lens and started filming her beauty up close and personal because it was unlike anything I've ever seen before. So insane to see how nature gifts us with these beautiful creatures and the crazy stages within each part of the transformation. You could see that this chrysalis, it had spikes on it, I guess just in case another predator came and tried to eat it. The texture of it, there were ridges and lines and it was very cool to see it up close. And as each day passed, the chrysalis began to get darker and darker, almost looking like a purple color that I knew our butterfly would eventually turn into. The chrysalis changes colors because of a special chemical and a process happening inside that chrysalis as the caterpillar transforms into a butterfly. It was almost like you could see the butterfly morphing into the new version of itself and it was amazing. By the final day, I noticed that the chrysalis was getting the darkest that it had been by that point. And I felt in my heart that something magical was about to happen. I was about to become best friends with a butterfly and I knew I was gonna give her the best day ever before she flew away into nature. 
It was almost as if the chrysalis was pumping up and down ever so slightly, and then finally, with three different camera angles right before my eyes, I saw this beautiful butterfly emerge from this tiny chrysalis in this enclosure. I'm gonna rewind that a bit and show you that one in real time because it was so breathtaking. You could see the butterfly taking her time as she spread her wings slightly more after each moment, and then as she started to crawl up the enclosure to find a safe place to dry her wings, she was beautiful. After emerging from the chrysalis, a butterfly pumps fluid into its wings and then waits for them to dry and harden before it can fly, and that usually takes a few hours. And when she emerges, the wings actually come out quite crumply. The only way for them to spread out and harden is by letting them dry, so the butterfly kind of just has to sit there, waiting patiently in order for them to be able to fly. The drying and the hardening of a butterfly's wings actually is what enables them to become strong and functional for flight. But once the butterfly's wings are dry and hardened, it can begin to explore its environment and search for food, and then it can fly to find a mate and start the next generation of little butterfly eggies. Butterflies actually find a mate primarily through pheromones. That's through scent. The colors and patterns on a butterfly's wings usually take up to two hours to fully develop, and after about 30 minutes, you could see how the butterfly was changing, and at this point in time, I decided that it was time to introduce myself. I didn't want to name her just yet because I didn't want to get too attached since I knew she would eventually fly away into nature a few hours later and I didn't want to be upset, but I did offer my finger as a gesture of this new friendship and slowly but surely, reluctantly at first though, she spread her wings and she looked at me, probably hoping I was a friend and not a predator, which she got lucky for this time. And soon, she actually ended up climbing onto my finger and flapped her wings more vigorously and the whole time she was looking at me like we were making direct eye contact. It was crazy, like a soul connection or something. And although it was tough for her to grasp onto my finger, she finally did and she began to explore the new surrounding of this new experience that we were both having, to be honest. The moment she fully climbed onto my finger was the moment that I knew that she really trusted me and wasn't scared and she kept looking at me and it was so cool but then it was time to actually see her wings and wow boy did those wings look different than 20 minutes prior and I was in absolute awe of the beauty of this experience I was having in that moment I really felt like a mother not even like a friend okay and as I witnessed her flap her wings it was an experience I will not ever forget. She flapped her wings and then she would get tired and wait a few moments and then she would flap them again and then wait again and the cycle continued for at least an hour. I admired her beauty, I talked to her, I sang to her and I walked around my house with her to show her all the plants. Raffi even loved her so much and became her big brother, ever so gently sniffing her and admiring her beautiful, tiny, little, fragile body. It was amazing to watch. I got more close-ups of her wings and it almost looked like a leaf when her wings were closed, which was probably helpful for when she would fly outside to be with nature because predators could easily miss her hanging from a leaf as she almost camouflaged with the settings around her. But when she opened her wings, that was a different story. And soon, I actually realized that she peed on me and I got very confused but then of course I learned that before butterflies can fly they need to get rid of extra fluid in their bodies and they do this by releasing a special liquid that helps them feel lighter. Once they're all set they can flutter around and explore the world so she didn't really pee on me. She was just signaling the fact that she was almost ready for flight and that's when I knew that it was time. I took her outside and let her hang out in my garden and that's when I realized she didn't want to leave me. She wouldn't go onto the plants, she just stayed put on my finger, so I just let her do her thing, giving her all the time in the world that she needed to take flight and say goodbye to this beautiful friendship that we just developed over the span of just a few hours. I was a bit nervous too that it was a little rainy outside. Not pouring, but it had just finished raining, so I thought it wouldn't be the right time, maybe it was too wet outside, but I knew I couldn't keep her forever, and I just let nature do its thing. And funny enough, the sun actually started 
started to emerge from the clouds and the rain stopped. Almost a signal to this butterfly letting her know that it was going to be okay. She would be able to find a mate and lay eggs before her passing. Adult butterflies live only for a few days to several weeks. And during this time, their main focus is finding food like nectar from flowers, mating with other butterflies, and of course laying eggs to continue the life cycle. So I took her inside one last time since she didn't want to get on those plants. And Raffi obviously wanted to say goodbye to her because I kind of forgot to let them say their goodbyes. And I also thought maybe it would help give her the confidence once I go back outside to fly away. I admired her beauty and thanked her for this once in a lifetime moment in becoming my friend or child should I say. And then before I even got the chance to go outside, she decided to fly outside on her own. But I ran after her because I didn't want to say goodbye just yet. And I saw that she was still in the garden. So I sat out there as she lay on the ground, almost waiting for me to come out and run after her. And then I told her that it was okay to fly away, but to come back and visit me every once in a while if she could. Or to send her babies to me too. She took a moment as if saying thank you and goodbye. And finally, she flew away into the hands of Mother Nature. I thanked nature and all the gifts she gives me. And then I went on another caterpillar hunt and found this guy. 